Hey guys and gals, welcome back to the studio. Ryan of Bloodshot Airbrushing. We are back as a follow up, follow up for the Bumble Beast. Um, I was watching the comments. I loved all the feedback. Thank you. Um, interested to know where you guys are from, what you guys do, how you guys do it. Um, I know as an artist, there is more than one solution to any problem. So just because I do it one way does not mean that's the only way. It does not mean it's tried and true. It just means it works for me. Um, if you got any tips, if you got any suggestions, if you have any questions, please throw it down in the comments and I'll get back to you if I can. Um, today we are back at the Bumble Beast. I know you guys are probably looking at that and saying, whoa, wait a minute, last video, didn't he paint that box with a glow? You know, I did, and me and Aaron were talking, we might have caught a clip of that at the end of the video, um, we weren't catching that blue, that AllSpark blue, um, and really guys, I struggled, I struggled a lot, um, I did it about three times, with no success, um, I wasn't catching that blue, uh, it dawned on me, after the fourth time, and taking a break, painting a couple other pieces, moving forward, and it dawned on me that my problem was, is I was trying to paint the blue glow on a yellow background. It was getting washed out. There was, there was nothing there. It was just disappearing. Um, I did the fender flares. Got a little bit of blue on there with my glow. Super happy with it. No brainer. Paint the box the gray. Problem solved. Alright guys, I'm real happy with the result here. Um, but we're going to move forward. Today, um, there's a lot of questions about painting RC bodies. Um, I know this isn't your typical RC body. Most of them are clear. Most of them are see-through. Most of them you paint from behind. So today, we're actually gonna... Oh, we're gonna pop out that window there. It was gonna work better, but it didn't. Um, and we're gonna give it a paint. You may notice that it's already got some color to it. Um, I did send that out to my auto body shop. Um, they painted it with a blue candy. Um, those of you who are unfamiliar with a candy, paint it's a very transparent paint so you can paint it layer upon layer upon layer upon layer and still see through it the more layers you put on the darker it gets but you can still see through it all right so we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a bit first let's get into some of the tools i'll be using today um there's the body i got some pre-cut stencils um these are some stencils i use on a fairly regular basis because we're gonna have some hard mechanical edges i got some hard edge stencils um this is called a french curve it's got curves that go from big to little and vice versa a couple different variations this helps with anything that obviously has a curve on it um some paper you can use this this is just regular loose leaf paper um you can use it to cut stencils out of which we will be doing today you can use it to draw on which we will be doing today and you can use it to spray on to check your paint paint as it's coming out sometimes i just use the paper that i'm working on also i have a mirror um mirrors are not necessarily essential for today but if you are painting your rc body it's good to have something where you can mirror from side to side you're painting this side you want to remember what's happening on that side make sure it matches it's the easiest way to do it also when we are going to cut some stencils today because we do not want to score the plastic we're going to be cutting on glass so if even just an old picture frame an old mirror something you got kicking around is going to help um i have a cutting board for virtually the same reason this is just a dollar store cutting board nothing special um when it gets too scored Throw it away, go to the dollar store, pick up another one. Um, this is an old block. I tape it up. This is where I do any of my paint mixing with my paint brushes. Um, I like to go in after the airbrushing, sometimes in between airbrushing, and do some finer detail with a paintbrush. You look at this bad boy, and he is super tiny. Focusing on it. There he is. Great for detail. All right, I got pencil, exacto knife. Pretty self-explanatory. I'm working with two different kinds of paints. I've got my urethane paints, my automotives, and I've got my thinner, which is a cleaner slash thinning agent for those paints. I've got my water-based paints and my cleaner slash thinner thinning agent for those paints as well. I've got paint brushes for both. I don't want to mix the paint brushes up and mix them into the other cups because then the paint brushes get ruined, the cups get messy. Keep those separated. Uh, shot glass, I just use this as a mixing pool. I'll pour whatever cleaner of whatever paint I'm using 
and I'll pour that cleaner in there and use it to clean the brushes to again keep them clean. I got some masking tape, pinstripe tape, paper towels to keep things clean, ruler to keep things straight. Uh, my reference, I got the original drawing, those of you who saw the initial video with uh, the concept drawing when me and Aaron were chatting about it. Um, obviously it's changed a little bit, um, it's an evolution. Nothing really ever stays the same, and just because it worked great on paper doesn't mean it's going to work ideal on the product. So sometimes that changes, sometimes the drawing changes. Um, I got some masking paper. Again, you don't really need to have the the high-end stuff. Just something to cover your, uh, your, your product so you don't get overspray on it. Uh, I think that wraps up. Oh, yes! Do not forget the airbrush and compressor. Now again, I run two airbrushes. I got a dual compressor. As long as you got something to put some air through, man, you're rolling. Um, Alright. So, first thing I'm going to do here is I got an idea, but we got to make that idea a reality. So, I'm going to take my windshield here. Take regular loose leaf paper. Oh, getting there a little bit wet. I'm just going to trace out my windscreen so yada 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 super quick I'm gonna do a quick sketch of what I want I'm gonna polish it up once I have it once I'm happy with it and I have it ready I'll bring you guys back in and we'll follow up with the next step all right we got our tablet trusty trusty tablet we'll just do that off screen not that I don't trust you but there's a lot of you all right um interweb as you see, I'm very tech savvy. All right, here we go. So this is what we are playing off today. Not a shoulder, not a shoulder. There we go. Something similar, mostly. <laughs> we'll get back to that, but mostly in the face region. All right, we're back. Uh, I did a sketch, something I'm pretty happy with. Um, Again, really trying to lose the uh, Disney cars feel, so we're not going to have any pupils. We're just going to have a glow coming from the eyes. I think that's going to be pretty killer. And uh, kind of keep it mechanical. Um, I simplified the Bumblebee. Um, I didn't bring my reference with me. I should have. I should have my reference in front of me at all times. But uh, I left it upstairs where I was sketching. I'll grab that before I start painting. But my next step is going to be to turn this into something I can place on here. And I don't want to be using my X-Acto knife. Some guys will, some guys won't. I'm doing multiple layers, so I don't want to be using my X-Acto knife on the plastic. Um, I fear that once I start chasing my blade on here that I got areas where my paint and the paint prior can peel. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this stencil on a plane of glass. Um, plane of glass or mirror. I got multiple mirrors kicking around, so I'm going to put some masking tape. Hello. Up on the mirror here, there's a reflection, and I'm going to transfer this onto my masking tape. For those of you who don't know, the simplest way to transfer something is called burnishing. Scribble on the back of your piece of paper, make sure you get some of that uh, lead everywhere, and once you have the whole thing covered, put it on top of whatever you want to burnish it to. Again, I'll have some masking tape laid, and just... Trace out your lines. I usually use a pen at that point because you want to get some pressure on uh, whatever you're burnishing so that that lead from the back transfers onto whatever you're tracing it onto. All right, once again, I will bring you back once I have that step done. Cheers. All right, guys. I got all the lines burnished. I'm gonna peel up. As you can see, it's now all been transferred onto my tape. So all that's left is for me to run my X-Acto knife and chase all those lines that I just burnished. Now that that's done, we have to transfer this tape onto the inside surface of here. A couple different ways you can do it. I think the easiest way is to use some more tape. Who knew? So I'm going to run this, making sure that it is not using the same lines. So I am overlapping my previous overlaps. This way when I do go to peel it up and transfer it, nothing gets left behind. Now, I'm going to ever so carefully 
start peeling back up this tape. The second layer we placed on. Put in another piece of tape there. Opposite on itself, it just helps it stay together. So now you're gonna start coming across your first layer of tape. Get your exacto knife under there. Peel up your corner. All right, halfway there. This is uh, the point in time where I'm going to mention, this is very time consuming. This is tedious, tedious work. There are other options. Um, other guys will spray mask their, their Lexan bodies and they'll cut right on the spray mask. Again, because of the way I'm doing things, because I've already had this based with automotive paints, because I don't want any of this candy that's already sprayed on there to lift, I'm limited to my options. Alright guys, so I got that peeled off. <laughs> Stay hydrated. And what I did was, just put on a piece of tape, use my handy ruler, Got a straight line down the middle, put a straight line on my stencil, now all I'm going to do is line it up. It'd be a pain in the butt to try to get a ruler in here right now and try to line this guy up. So do it beforehand, save yourself a lot of grief. So I'm going to slowly peel her back. If I had auto zoom, I'd auto zoom in on here. Taking my time, using my extra fingernail here. The, the scalpel, as my bud once referred to it. And it's going to want to separate. Tape is sticky, sticks to itself. It's okay, just move slow. Even if it separates, you can always come back. Lost a little corner there, you can always put it back on. I'm not going to worry so much about hair anyways because that is going to fade out into my black. But just to show you. No stress. We got our stencil laid on, ready to be sprayed. I'm going to mix up some paint and we're going to get in on it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel my darkest areas first. When you're spraying from a Lexan body from the inside out, you always want to do your darkest colors first. Uh, reason being is when you're doing your dark colors, let's say I'm spraying this area black and I'm spraying this area white. If I were to spray the white first and then leave it and then go to spray my black, I'm going to get black over spray on my white. Now there's potential of that showing up through your plastic. So if you had this area sprayed black and you got a little bit of a white overspray on top of your black, chances of that showing through, your lighter colors showing through your darker colors are very slim. It may not look so great from the inside, but what we're looking for is the pop from the outside. I'm doing everything in transparent colors, so I want it to look good from the inside and the outside, obviously, because you're going to see right through it. Um, I'm going to try to give a, the eyes a glow being as I've lost the opportunity to go any lighter than what it already is, because I'm going darks to lights, saving my lightest, I'll be saving the eyeballs for last and working my way inward. I've got a couple vents that I've cut out, and plus the whole... Maybe this might work better. Let's try this instead, hey? Yeah, yeah, he's thinking. He's thinking sometimes. So I've got vents on either side I'm going to cut out. I'm going to spray those first. And I've got the whole sort of background, the part that you can't see on his face, but you know there's something back there. So I'm just going to spray all that fairly dark and then start working my way up from there. Um, this being my brightest areas, the glowing eyeballs. And in order to get a glow, all I'm going to do is I'm going to spray my darks and start my fade. 
So I'm going to hit more dark in this area and just keep a fade around my eyes to keep it so it looks like it's glowing. Alright guys, that's the end of part one. Stay tuned for part two.